Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Blood Bowl starting rosters, Norse team. So this video should be dropping on the day of pre-order. So the Norse team, Pitch, Dice, Spike are all going to be dropping now as well as the Forge World star players. So get your pre-orders in because this time next week you'll be sitting there playing and building your Norse team, hopefully. Anyway, starting rosters, what we do is we have a look and see what you can get into your team for 1 million gold. Now, most Blood Bowl leagues start with 1 million gold pieces, and we are going to be looking at these starting rosters with a view of if I was going to go and play a Blood Bowl league of 8 to 12 games, what would I want to take for Norse from a vanilla point of view? And this is quite a varied roster, and there are some roster changes that we'll go through very quickly too, but there's a ton of good stuff in this team. It is a tier 1 team, and it deserves to be. Okay, so let's talk Norse roster changes. Um, the Yeti has stayed the same. The Ulfbroders have stayed the same. The Catcher and the Thrower positional are gone. So if you played this team in Blood Bowl 2016 or you've been using them from the Teams of Legend PDF, big watch out there. Catchers, gone. Throwers, gone. They do not exist anymore. They've been replaced by another positional called the Valkyrie down here that you can kind of take two of your favorite models, whether it's a thrower or a catcher, and use them as because the new Valkyrie positional has pass, catch, dauntless, and strip ball. So basically a kind of hybrid thrower catcher, still movement seven, do not worry, but 95k, very expensive positional. Uh, the berserkers have stayed the same. The linemen have got almost better. They've gained thick skull. So they're still armor eight plus, but they've got thick skull. So they are... It's going to stick around on the pitch, albeit stunned, a little bit more often, which is massively going to help the roster. On the downside, they've got Drunkard, which means that if they are making a rush move, if they're making a go for it, it's only going to succeed on a 3+, plus instead of a 2+, plus, and therefore a 4+, plus in Ice or Blizzard or whatever it is. Uh, there is also one more positional to mention, which is the Beer Boar. Now, the Beer Boar is a 20k strength 1 stunty titchy player that is really of no use combat-wise, but is of massive use from a roster building point of view, as we're going to look in, uh, but also has this aura effect that at the end of your opponent's turn, if you've got a prone but not stunned player within three squares of a standing Beer Boar, on a 5+, plus, they just get straight back up before the start of your turn. So, going to be a massive impact every now and again, but does give you that vulnerability of the fact that one of your 11 players is a strength 1 beer ball. Anyway, let's have a look at some starting rosters for Norse. Okay, so the Norse roster has got a ton of great positional, so we're going to see just how much we can sneak into a 1 million gold. <laughs> he said pound build. Right, 3 reroll Yeti comes in at 990 here. We've got the Yeti. Now, the Yeti is 140k, big strength 5 bruiser with claws, with frenzy, and a cheeky bit of disturbing presence as well. So, it does get that extra aura effect to kind of influence the ball skills of your opponent. Not the most important thing here. The fact that this Yeti is frenzy and claws means that it is going to just have a wonderful time deleting some of your opponent's players. Now, Mighty Blow and Claws don't stack the way they used to, um, so you can still take Mighty Blow on a strength, uh, but basically you will be Claws on an 8 plus to break armor, and then Mighty Blow, if it works, will then apply for the injury roll. It's still bloody. It is still effective. It just doesn't add up like it used to. Uh, failing that, you can kind of go the Juggernaut. I'm going to Blitz with my Yeti route or uh, Brawler. I'm just going to get stuck in with my Yeti. I find that Brawler is probably going to be a better skill um, because the Yeti is going to end up in base contact a lot of the time. It's going to be frenzying around and kind of a little bit of a mosh pit. Your team has a lot of block. It's going to be blocking. It's going to be brawling. So Brawler fits nicely, but if you want to or Yeti to pretend to be a Minotaur, then Juggernaut is the skill for you. Mighty Blow, like we said, is always good. Now, the technically correct thing to do is to get block on your Yeti whenever you can. It is a double skill, which means it's going to be 12 SPP to save for that Yeti, which is six casualties. So it's a bit of a long haul. Technically correct, block. But if you're playing tabletop and you don't want to wait several years to get that block Yeti, then actually Brawler or Juggernaut are going to do a great job, as is Guard. Now, this guy getting Guard is going to allow your normal Strength 3 dudes that stand next door to him to get two die blocks. And two die blocks with block are good blocks to block with. So Guard is also a really great option. 
On this roster, we've got two Wolf Warreners and two Valkyries. So the two Ulfs are going to be your strength for Blitzers in this roster. This roster does not have Berserkers, but this is the biggest catch-all here. This roster, Ulf Warreners are 90k. No, Ulf Warreners are 105k. Valkyries are 95k. Berserkers are 90k. So if you want to swap out an Ulf Warrener for a Berserker, both your Valkyries for a Berserker, you absolutely can. I've built this roster to have four of the most expensive positionals because you can swap any two of those out for a Berserker if you want one. I personally think the Berserker's role is awesome. Jump up is great. Frenzy is great. The fact it's got block is great. Great player. Great blitzer. But actually, you've got block linemen, you've got the strength four of the Ulf Warren with Frenzy. I'd rather have strength four Frenzy than strength three Frenzy with block. That's just how I roll, and they're more expensive, and we can get them in the roster. But you can downgrade the Ulf to a Berserker. And I want to run two Valkyries. I think the fact that they've got AGP access is awesome. Um, and yeah, they've got no combat skills to start with, but they start with Strip Ball and Dauntless and block, and, uh, sorry, and pass and catch. So as soon as they get block, you can go and do whatever you can go wrestle strip ball with them which is great you can go block and use them as your primary ball carrier you can go on the ball and use them as a ball collector you can give them sure hands valkyries are going to be awesome and are therefore i think a reasonable candidate for random skills um but they are at movement seven the fastest players on this team and i think that's what they're what's really important about it five linemen and linemen are linemen now the great thing about these linemen is they've got block already so actually you can do what you like with them a random general for a norse lineman is a great thing uh sure hands to make them a ball handler is a great thing that means you've got a lineman to be your ball picker upper and then your valkyries to be your touchdown scorers works nicely tackle does work brilliantly on these linemen um they can be your, your sweepers at movement six it gives them great coverage in the backfield with block you get that strength that, that skill access sorry that skill benefit but it also means that you don't have to use tackle on an ulf warrener you can go block with the ulf to give him that combat strength and you kind of got a bit of a sweeper now, this roster here has three rerolls and one beer bore. So we've got the one beer bore as our starting 11. Now, that is so that we can take that 20k player, which is cheaper than 50k as a lineman, and use it as kind of a cash buffer to buy that second off to get the Yeti on the roster to really just play with the cash. Now, one beer bore means you will have to deploy him. It also means, however, that the beer bore can run around, do stuff, then potentially die. Now, this is league, so the beer bore can go and you will get a Norse lineman for free with loner. Okay, a journeyman, loner lineman can go on the line, protect your actual team. So you can have the beer bore and it might do great things. It might die. If it dies, you get compensated in the way of a free journeyman for your league while you save up the cash to buy your berserker you've got three re-rolls you've saved that cash from the the long-term investment point of view you've got 180k's worth of re-rolls that you don't have to then spend 120k to buy extra ones for this means that at 90k you get to add a berserker instead of waiting all the way to 120k to add a re-roll so three re-roll yeti pretty all-rounder get a bit of everything or you can go three re-rolls without the yeti so two ulf warreners two valkyries and we get two berserkers on this roster with four linemen two beer boars and three re-rolls so that gives us one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve players so you get 11 players including a beer boar and then another beer boar as well so uh ulf warreners are doing the same thing but they are now your heavy hitters but they do get backed up by those berserkers that we've added to the roster here now with that in mind the fact that old warriors get strength access having guard on them can be quite beneficial because then you kind of get to strike with those berserkers as well uh, but given those zerks uh, who've also got strength access guard or mighty blow or tackle to be your extra sweepers is great basically what happens here is you get four frenzied blitzers to do things with two of them are strength three with block two of them are strength four no block so a great mix there uh, four linemen two beer balls three re-rolls is a great all-rounded roster the only thing you've got to wait for is 140k to add that yeti or you can go max frenzy now this gives you a big roster with a big amount of hitting power so 990 is going to get you one yeti two wolf warriors and two berserkers that is five frenzy pieces one with strength five two with strength four and two with block which is not bad this kind of this brawls with corn 
in a dangerous way and is also backed up with six block linemen. So that's your starting 11. Now, because you get a little bit of cash left over, you get two beer bores as well. Now, at 990, you can sack off both those beer bores and get an extra lineman, or you can take that cash, play around with it, and probably get another Valkyrie in there. But this is sitting at two re rolls now. Now, this is the fun roster. Two re rolls, frenzy, 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 frenzy is going to be risky. But there are going to be those games where this just comes into play. Now, the beer balls are really important on this roster because what happens when you make a lot of frenzy blocks? You fail a lot of blocks, a lot more blocks than you would normally fail. Now, it may not be very many. You can definitely play around it and choose not to block, which is the biggest skill that you will have to come across if you are a frenzy heavy blood bowl coach. But sometimes your dude's going to end up on the ground. That beer ball in your backfield just being able to give you a 1 in 3 chance of standing up a prone dude at the end of their turn means that this roster where you've got all this combat power there's an intrinsic part of it that's just going to reanimate itself and drunkenly stand up and just keep brawling. And if I was going to have a player stand up, I would want it to be a Berserker or an Ulf Warrener or a Yeti. So while you've got essentially 13 players on this roster, you've got that angle where those beer balls will give you a tactical choice. Put them in the backfield, on defense, your opponent gets opening blocks probably going to have one or two of your dudes stand up again which is going to give you free blocks and when you are blocking with strength four frenzy strength five frenzy claws or just strength three frenzy and block the more blocks you can make the better and we've got a slightly different roster here two re-roll mix this is for the beer ball purists of you as in no beer balls allowed at 995 so we're going all in here this is one yeti two all runner one valkyrie two berserkers six linemen for 12 players and two re-rolls so if you are a confident coach you don't need a lot of re-rolls actually what this does is it allows you to maximize having both uh, a bench and as many positionals as you can afford now what you can do is drop two linemen down and take the other valkyrie here you've got no beer balls but you've got everything else at two re-roll it's kind of max positional what this does is it gives you that extra bench now you can drop that bench for 50k and take an apothecary and just use that to keep your positionals alive this is what this roster does this gives you all the good stuff with a little bit spare you're just a little bit low on those re-rolls so the two re-roll mix gives you that kind of mid-range build you've got a bit of cash left over you can bin off that 12th player get an apothecary bin off that 12th player put all that money into dedicated fan factor you get flex with this and you get the yeti you get those ults you get two berserkers you get the heavy combat contingent you've just flexed and picked up one of your fastest players in the valkyrie as well and i've got a slight twist for you here as well so this is the two re-roll ball buy okay this one comes in at 980 yeti two wolf runners two valkyries two berserkers two linemen and two beer balls with two re-rolls this is the all twos roster you get everything you need with the exception of some re-rolls now this is an interesting roster this is going to leave you with two strength one players in your starting 11 that is a huge vulnerability on the other hand it means you max out on everything you want with the exception of re-rolls you start with every positional you will ever need for norse and the reason it's called the boar buy is because this is a way to cheat your cash flow in a league. Now, this is an interesting one. You take these 11 players, you have both those beer balls, and then you fire them after that first game. You will be compensated in league with two free journeymen. So that first game, you are going to be down in the way of power. You're going to have all your positionals. They're going to start those reps. That first game is going to be a little tough, but a beer ball can help get your players up. But then you start the next game with a couple of journeymen, which gives you 11 strength three plus players. All of your positionals, only two rerolls, sure. But this is where you can kind of use those balls in a league setting or in a tournament to kind of play the cash game. This is an interesting one. It's a great place to start. The first game will be rough. But when you sack those beer balls off, or you can keep one and just sack another, or, you know, quite frankly, one or two of them may just die in that game, you can start using and leaning on that journeyman rule because you've maxed out on all your positionals. In fact, what I'd say is the first thing you buy with this roster is an apothecary, and you can even play the cash around a little bit, maybe drop a Valkyrie, take a lineman, that will give you 50k to get that apothecary, and you just start 
brewing up your positionals as quickly as possible. A Yeti with Mighty Blow, a Yeti with Brawler, an Ulf Warren with Block or Mighty Blow, a Valkyrie with anything, basically. This is where your roster is going to start brewing up and having one or two free loan alignment to put on the line and die which is not going to be all the time because with block and thick skull they're going to stick around and with block that loner is kind of limited anyway and with two rerolls actually you've got a ton of integral power and skill to kind of balance it out this is a great way to kickstart your team if you are going to play try and play catch up your first game is a bit of a write-off it's not you know you are starting at a disadvantage on the pitch but this is going to kickstart you maybe four or five games worth of positionals and that is quite important so if you're late to a league i can see playing the cash rule playing the salary cap game here doing it nfl style is definitely one to be aware of because you can you can use it to get everything you're ever going to need and then you just have to hope that they don't die but quite frankly it's got to be three re-roll yeti there is an argument to say that the norse don't need three re-rolls it's a fair argument, okay? Um, because you've got block, you've got strength, fantastic. But you've got those Ulf Warners, you've got those Valkyries, and you've got those linemen. The linemen and the Yeti are a heck of a combat contingent. Those two Ulf Warners can be great blitzers, and the Valkyries are just limitless players. You've got one beer board to keep your team kicking around and just get to try them out. This, I think, is a great start. You do lack a little bit in the way of positionals with those Berserkers, but you get the best Berserkers there, the Ulf Warriors. So I love this roster. You're going to save money over time by not having to pay 120k for that third reroll, but you've got 180k's worth of Berserkers to buy instead. I like this roster. It gives you a bit of everything, and I think it's probably one of the most sensible ones. Although, if you're feeling sporty, the Beer Boar buy roster will probably net you more benefit in a league uh over time anyway thank you very much for watching let me know which of these norse rosters you're running with or if there's something else there that you think is a better balance then please chuck it in the comments so that everybody can see this is what's great about these videos is that your guys advice is there forever and then when you're trying to pick up a norse team and looking at your rosters you can flick through the comments and see some other brilliant ideas too anyway for now i'm going to disappear enjoy your norse teams and we'll be back soon with more blood bowl content happy blocking thanks very much for watching we really appreciate your support if you want to help support the channel even further please like and subscribe or come join us on our patreon we have early access to content we get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.